Hi, uh, thanks very much. This isn't a party political broadcast. I'm not a member of any political party. But I did want to reflect a bit on the politics of the last few years and the process we've all been going through and think what that means. Uh, I come to this as, uh, as a writer. My own experience was to um, write a blog that was a hobby called Bella Caledonia. And uh, it came to the point where it was getting a million readers a month and it's become my full-time job. So um, that's, that's wh what I was trying to do. And um, I think I wanted to reflect about the fact that the, the concept of where we are is deeply connected to who we are. And that's something that people in Scotland have been thinking about for 100 years and more. And in 2014, we decided that the who we are is... Uh, uh, a country that didn't want to govern itself. Dependence won. And I think that since then, that, that space, that idea has lost ground. And what we've seen is landslide historic victories for a party that has self-determination it, as its main aim. So things have changed. And the settlement that we're left with is a peculiar one because we're in charge of some areas of our policies and not in charge of others. We are governed both by a government that we elect and by one that we do not. We are in a space in between, uh, a liminal land, and I want to talk a little bit about that. At the heart of this process for a very long time has been cultural renewal the rediscovery of language, the rediscovery of poetry, art, and music. In uh, 2014, uh, Lord George Robertson was at a talk in Dundee, and he said, in Flanders, in Belgium, and Catalonia, and Spain, uh, uh, they say they want to become an independent state, but they have language and culture there. We don't have any of that here. <laughs> It's an extraordinary statement for someone to make, and um, I think it's something that's been a motivation ever since. Uh, we started uh, publishing in Scots on our website a few months ago, and someone contacted me and said, I never thought that I could write the way I speak. And so we're at a moment when people have to be given permission to write and express themselves in their native tongue. And that's an extraordinary space to be in. Last year, Colin Waters wrote that if you throw a stone in Edinburgh or Glasgow, you'll hit a poet. The <laughs> spoken word scene has exploded in this country and is more vibrant than it's been since the 1970s. Now, I'm not advocating throwing stones at poets, even though that's sometimes a temptation. But what I am suggesting is that there's a connection between cultural renewal and political change. Ever since the Enlightenment, Edinburgh has been known as the Athens of the North. But some people are now referring to it instead as the Reykjavik of the South. And this radical reimagination of where you find us has some profound implications. Because rather than being a cold northern outpost, a North Britain, we can reconceive ourselves as a vibrant, innovative southern base for the greater North. And that's an interesting space to explore. I wonder why uh, there is still this sense of hope when there was such defeat for a movement that had expectancy. And one of that, those things is that there's a carry-on because it was a time when constitutional change seemed deeply connected to radical and progressive change. The voter turnout of 85% showed that those disaffected from politics were returning the fact that 16 and 17 year olds were involved for the very first time gave youth a voice and women played a central role in a way they hadn't previously. So we are still in this space in between and liminal comes from the Latin word limin which means a threshold and in anthropology this threshold is thought to be the space during a transformative ritual, the space where you are neither what you were previously nor what you are to become. And I think that that's where we are, at the middle of a ritual, in a liminal space. So what does that ritual look and feel like? I think that that ritual is about 
throwing off a culture of deference. I think that ritual is about making a space for hope. I think that ritual is about distancing yourself from the defence mechanism of cynicism. And I think that ritual is about aspiring to better and believing that change can happen. The promise of the end of the ritual beyond liminality is that we can become active Scottish citizens rather than passive British subjects. As we move through and we try and regather belonging and identity, it's important that we face forwards and aren't pulled into the past, because this is about Raploch, not Bannockburn. I think as we aspire to better and move through, we can reclaim this space. We can reclaim the aspiration for a better society. There's a phrase that we like to use to, uh, to reclaim this idea of an alternative politics. It's time to get above ourselves. Thank you very much for listening.